Hello and welcome to the introduction to theory, research, and writing, a course at Signum University that is part of your preparation for your full degree program. My name is Brenton Dickinson. I am one of the preceptors of this course and have taught this course before and am your preceptor for this section for this fall 2018 session. Now what I want to do is do a quick video, a uh, bit 12 minutes or so, uh, to give you a, an orientation to what the class will look like and to help you prepare for your first day of school. And this is a class I love teaching, uh, and I want to give you some sense of what it will be like, although it is not a class that is as predictable as one of your language or literature classes at Signum or at other grad schools. It is a bit more complex in its design, and it has a lot more voices uh, than we often have in a class. And so I want to kind of walk through a little bit of what this will feel like. First of all, you should look at the syllabus uh, that you can get through Google Classroom. And uh, Google Classroom will be sort of the home base for where we'll be giving out resources, not just the ones that are standard for the class, but extra resources, uh, helps, videos, uh, papers that you can use in your research along the way. And so take a look at the syllabus, and you'll see that there's actually an outline of both the assignments as well as a weekly outline for the class. Now, the way this class will work is kind of like this, removing uh, material from two or three courses into one. And so it's a fairly dense structure. It's a fairly full structure but what we're basically doing in the first third of the class in the first four weeks we're, we're coming to the question of what it means to do research what it means to uh, think academically in today's cultural moment and what it means to uh, prepare papers to write papers and we do this fairly quickly and with some resources and then we start to move into the theory section of the course which is the last two-thirds this is where we ask foundational questions of what it does it, what does it mean to read uh, does meaning reside in the words of the text or the culture that the text came out of or our culture or the individual who's reading it or the author who wrote it in the first place or is there any meaning at all we might ask um, how do we talk about text what does it mean when we come from different backgrounds backgrounds and study text and what does it mean when different texts uh, relate to different backgrounds or social moments these are the kinds of questions that we'll look at in the last two-thirds of the class the last eight weeks on theory because of Signum University's unique approach to things we will be beginning with uh, two of the the primary areas that we we uh, talk about ideas in this class uh, in, at Signum University one we we look at texts closely we do close reading and so we'll be referencing that not just at the beginning of the theory section but that it will be one of the theoretical approaches that we'll have so close re reading squeezing in on a text looking at it for every detail and then we'll also be doing some inklings ideas and theory uh, in uh, early on in our, our conversation about theory and we'll actually be closing off the class with some of those same things we'll bring the questions of the class back together and we'll come back to questions of pop culture and the inklings and the wh where theory is going near the end of the class as well and, and really what this class is about is how to read and write well so the first bit, uh, the first third is about the writing bit. The second third is about reading. What does it mean to be good readers? How to read close reading in many different kinds of ways. And we're also presenting theory not just as proponents of theory, but also as skeptics of theory. We are sometimes asking hard questions about uh, what it is we're studying and whether or not this is valuable. And in some cases, we just may say, this is an idea that I can't use or that we don't see any use for anymore or at all. And that's okay. We're going to be both critical and connected to the material that we study this semester. Now, that's the general sweep of the outline. We'll come back to the individual classes a little bit later. Uh, but I should note that this is a, a hard class in a couple of ways. It's, it's not hard when it comes to the amount of reading, unlike a literature class where you may go through you know, thousands of pages of text in a semester. Um, uh, one time in a, in a week class I, I taught, we had um, Lord of the Rings as suggested reading. So what is that, 1,500 pages or so, just as extra. So no, it's not going to have that kind of difficulty to it. It won't take as much time as a literature course where the materials are all new to you. But it is hard in the ideas. If you, it, you may have encountered some of these these ideas if you have a literature undergraduate degree or other kind of graduate degree in, in a critical field or if you studied fields like philosophy or religion um, you will encounter some of these ideas 
Uh, however, uh, some of them are going to be entirely new to you, uh, and some of them are going to be cultural hot points that exist in, in the world uh, today. And so this is, the, the car course is sort of hard on ideas, and we'll keep working on that this semester, but it's also hard in a personal way, because we're going to be talking about things that are really intimate to us, you know, our, our race, our gender, our uh, cultural perspective, our religion, uh, the age in which we live, uh, the, the kinds of literature that we like to read or don't like to read. So it, it can sometimes get a bit personal. And so it is, is important that this class will be a, a bit more open when it comes to sharing our own stories and spaces about where we come from when we read. And so the course is hard in those two ways. I don't know that it's harder in the amount of work that has to be done, um, but it is a bit unusual in, in how the class is organized that way. And so you do want to prepare kind of mentally for uh, big ideas to be resonating through your brain through the semester, as well as uh, class sessions that have kind of an energy to them in that they're personally connected to where we live. Well, now let's actually look at what some of our resources are for studying. Let's begin with the text. Now, you have a number of assigned texts uh, that will be in the syllabus, and, uh, and let's start kind of looking at those. Uh, one of them, um, and this is only recommended, you can find this digitally through uh, the Purdue Online Writing Lab uh, or something like that, is the MLA Handbook. Everything is going to be done in this class to the Modern Language Association format, if you're familiar with it, you've already started working in it. If not, this will be new to you, and it's actually very precise. Uh, the new format's actually pretty elegant um, compared with uh, previous versions, and it's getting easier to use, not harder to use. And we'll also have a video lecture about some of the tools that you could use to give this a try. Uh, so that's something that you'll need. Uh, you could find a copy of this in a local bookstore for about five bucks or online for about 10 bucks plus shipping, um, or, or you, can, um, you can find some other way. You'll be responsible for for knowing the details in it, but if you don't buy the book, you'll probably be okay. Uh, one book that is uh, is really kind of focused on the front end of the course is The Craft of Research, which is written by Wayne Booth and a whole bunch of people. Um, Wayne Booth is dead, and actually two of the people that have rewritten this over time is dead. And this book, um, they are dead. This book is, is a representation of like a movement of thought about what it means to craft a research paper, to craft ideas. And this is pretty good and really easy to read. And it also has uh, some nice kind of resources here. I've actually pegged down pages here that I wanted to, uh, to spend more time on, as well as questions to get you thinking and resources to help you do the work that you're doing. And so that will be mostly in the first third of the class. In the second third of the class, uh, we're really pleased to announce that our textbook this year is Claire Connor's Literary Theory. Now, this is a, a, a lovely book, actually. Uh, she, she's kind of, uh, it's just an introduction, a beginner's guide. It's actually part of a series of beginner's guides on, on all kinds of things, including, you know, mafia and organized crime, Marx, medieval philosophy, Middle East, uh, Machiavelli. Those are just the M's. So it, it's, uh, it, it's, it's very basic. It's not going to be difficult, and you can get it in Kindle, you can get it in audiobook, and you can get it in paper book, and I have all of them. Um, and uh, she writes really well, and she uses books that you may or may not have read, but you'll be familiar with as you go through um, the, the various parts of the class. And she uses those books to text, uh, test out different ideas in, in reading. Um, it's not a perfect outline to our, our, our class. So you'll be kind of bouncing around a little bit, but it mostly follows the outline that we follow in our class, including a couple things that we don't, we don't get to. I, I like this because it's not often you can get a textbook that's enjoyable to read on its own as a textbook and so um, and then you get to you know look at other things like Virginia Woolf or Charles Dickens or all these various writers that she's in conversation with so I would encourage you to take a look at that um, uh, she does a well done and it's actually assigned so that's part of your textbook assigned we have recommended uh, Terry Eagleton's uh, famous literary theory book it's probably the most read literary theory book of the last 40 years uh, this is a second edition text, and, and there may even be a, um, 
a third one with just a different introduction. Uh, Terry Eagleton was a, a public intellectual, very um, well known, has written some really interesting literary criticism himself, and uh, also is a, a Marxist, so it comes from a very particular perspective. Uh, he's entertaining and difficult. And so we've left, uh, we have the page numbers for you to follow along with in this literary theory textbook by Terry Eagleton for those that want to dig in a little bit or to experience some of the perspectives a bit firsthand. Now there are a couple of others, if you want background or you want extra support, um, I would recommend, and I don't have a, a paper copy, I only have Kindle, uh, Jonathan Culler's very short introduction uh, to literary theory is really quite good. It asks basically five different questions and answers them uh, in a you know, short 100, 150 page book. But there are some others as well. Uh, this one is Stephen Lynn, uh, Text and Context, Writing About Literature and Critical Theory. And what's really great about this book is it's interest in critical theory, but it's also looking at how to apply that and to move that into our writing and into our critical reading. So it's a really good book with a nice outline. Uh, we didn't choose it for this class, uh, but uh, it is one that you could read as a supplementary text if you can find it locally. A bit older, there's one by uh, Charles Bressler and one by uh, Andrew uh, Bennett and Nicholas Royal uh, that each have different approaches. Any of these could be added, like Terry Eagleton, to fill out your reading uh, this semester. But of those, the only ones that actually assigned are the Claire Connors and the Wayne Booth approach. So um, the Claire Connors when we're doing theory and Wayne Booth in the first of the class when we're doing the writing. <coughs> We will be ref referring to scholars and thinkers in the field a few, uh, quite a lot throughout the semester, and I'll be using the Critical Tradition. This is a nice, thick text, an anthology of literary theory. I'll be using occasionally papers from that to supplement it. You don't have to have these. I'll provide them when needed. But if you have one of these kind of honking anthologies kind of kicking around, I have another one. Uh, by uh, Julie Rivkin and Michael Ryan. So they, 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 they tend to find their way into my house and uh, we'll use them from time to time. Now, so those are your texts. Uh, focus on Claire Connors and Wayne Booth and know the MLA stuff. Now, how do the weeks work? And, and I will get into this in our first week of preceptor sessions and we'll get to discuss this. But basically, we'll be doing mostly one uh, class that's about the ideas or the theory that we're working on. Uh, and then one where you'll be workshopping your materials. Um, this there are some weeks where there's less workshopping and there's some weeks where there's all workshopping. And so that bends a little bit, but that's basically how it will go. Um, and uh, each week you're being, gonna be prepping an assignment. So this is an unusual class in that you don't ever at any point write a big you know, 20 page paper for me. Uh, you're welcome to do that for yourself, but that's not gonna happen here. Instead, this whole class is about creating a proposal for a project that would be like your thesis. For those of you who are later on in your semester, you're going to be thinking about your thesis. You can use this as a thesis proposal process to prepare you for the pathway to the thesis. For those of you who are earlier on in your project, uh, earlier on in your life at Signum, which is will be most students, um, you can just pick an idea that, that works for you or something you want to tease out or maybe even something you're thinking about for a long paper or project sometime and create a project proposal. And M many of the weekly assignments that we have, and we have assignment every week except one, will be a, a piece of the puzzle that is your project proposal. I realize that's getting awkwardly alliterative there. And so uh, you'll be adding a whole bunch of little assignments together to create kind of one larger assignment. It'll have quite a lot of pages, but a lot of that will be bibliography and some outlining. So uh, that project proposal is your main thing. You'll be writing some small papers, a small archive assignment of, of you know, three or four pages. You'll be writing a close reading of you know three pages, writing a theory essay of about five pages, applying one of the ideas that, that we're working on. Uh, but there's not a lot of writing just as writing in this course. There's more organizing and creating lists and, and creating conversations and work workshopping your material for others. There's also a peer review component that we'll talk about in our class where, for, for especially for the first half of the class, you'll be exchanging papers with one another. Now, so that's basically what we're looking on, theory one day and then workshopping the other. But I'm going to bring in another resource in order to help us out, and that is 
Uh, I wanted to pick a piece of literature that is well known to us, one that is uh, uh, critically important to the field, uh, canonical in a certain kind of sense, one that you probably have read and you would delight in reading again, and one that's weighty enough to give us a chance to test out these big philosophical ideas, these huge ideas that we're going to be struggling with this semester. How can we bring that down to a fine point and really think hard about it? And so I picked Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh, right? You know, he's a great Pooh. And so we're going to be looking at Winnie the Pooh uh, and, uh, and finding our way into, um, uh, into what kind of critical moments Winnie the Pooh has for us. So we'll be testing Winnie the Pooh out on you know, postmodern, uh, postmodernism or the new criticism or do a feminist reading of Winnie the Pooh. I'll bring in some other resources, particularly from my field as a C.S. Lewis scholar, uh, occasionally some Tolkien stuff as we come along. But Winnie the Pooh, we're going to be talking about Winnie the Pooh probably for five or ten minutes at the end of each week. It's a fun way to kind of bring together the ideas and focus them. And actually, it's funny, after I assign this, this will be my second year trying this out, I actually went and at a local bookstore actually found this book called The Pooh Perplex. I know, these, these P alliteratives. Uh, and and uh, this is written in 1958, really before theory kind of took off, uh, by a guy named Frederick Cruz, who's a literary uh, critic, and he actually tries out some older uh, literary theory on Winnie the Pooh. Uh, and so we'll be using that a bit as a resource. I found mine for three bucks. You may be able to find yours locally at a used bookstore. It's a lot of fun. It's great fun to read, mostly because it, it's, you know, it's a parody in a lot of ways, but he does try out the theoretical things. The postmodern poo, written maybe 15 years ago at the turn of the century, is not quite as good, but it's written by the same guy 40 years later, and you know, that's pretty interesting. And so he actually takes some of the newer theories, you know, postmodernism and queer theory and new critical ideas, and he applies them to the postmodern, uh, to the poo uh, in that context. So we'll occasionally dip into Frederick Cruz as a resource, but you don't have to have him. And strictly speaking, you don't have to buy Winnie the Pooh as one of your course packet books. It's not included in the course packet on the main syllabus, but in my preceptor session we'll be working on it. I suspect most of you will have a copy uh, on uh, one of your bookshelves, uh, but r if you don't, you know, go to somebody's house that has kids and raid their bookshelf or, you know, pirate a copy or, you know, um, you know, just pick up a copy from your local library uh, because it, it's going to be a great text that will form us. All right, so how to prepare for your first class. One, look at the syllabus. Number two, start reading Pooh. Get Pooh into your soul. You can you can enjoy Pooh uh, as you prepare for this class because I, you can't read Pooh too many times. Number three, if you want to start reading, I would do either looking at Wayne Booth uh, and, and really getting to know what that is and, and where it's sort of a, some of its essay and some of its just lists of things to do, getting a sense of what Wayne Booth is about. Or if you want to start in on theory but don't want to start the Claire Connors book, I would, I would um, encourage you to look at Jonathan Culler's A Very Short Introduction to Literary Theory or one of the others as a way of reading this late summer uh, and early fall to get ready. Um, and in the first week, we're going to be creating a list of local local resources that you have, libraries, you know, um, bookstores, uh, places of learning, places where you're going to be able to work uh, and get critical support, uh, even though you're at a digital university. So you could start thinking about that. So that's how you could prepare for this particular week. My name again is Brenton Dickinson. If you have any questions at all, you can email me at brentondickinson at signumu.org. Uh, I uh, love working with students, and so it's never a pain to, to email me. Uh, I will respond to every email uh, in uh, 12 hours during the weekday or 24 hours. I usually take either Saturday or Sunday off. And so, uh, but I will respond to you yeah, all the time as quickly as I can to make sure that the distance that happens in distance education is narrowed by our connection with one another through our digital platforms and through conversations that we have both in class and and through modes like uh, the Google discussion board or by email. So I look forward to seeing you in our first preceptor sessions and we'll talk to you soon.